What is it about bringing a fish to the fly that captures the imagination of so many fly fishers all over the world? A feathered hook, sometimes no bigger than a penny, that can hold an angler captivated. Casting in stealth for hours, just waiting, watching, sensing. It's a question that only a fly fisher can really grasp, but I doubt even they can truly fathom a plausible explanation. Be it an Atlantic salmon or sea trout from a classic Scottish river, or a bright silver GT or bonefish from our emerald oceans, or further afield still, perhaps a vivid golden dorado from the rainforests of South America, or a brightly coloured peacock bass from the lakes of Asia. There is just something so rewarding when everything comes together and a fish takes the fly. Oh. Oh. But what is it about the fly? Is it the first pull? That tug? That instant you realise a fish has taken your fly? Or is it visual? Perhaps it's the sight of erupting water as your quarry breaks the surface and shows itself as your triumph. Perhaps it's the conclusion of landing a fish. On the bank. In the net. Or better still, just alongside, never leaving the water. That brightly coloured, beautiful specimen that measures your skill, your success, and ultimately your enjoyment. Is it just the satisfaction of fooling a line-shy fish and enticing it to take your skillfully tied yet undeniably artificial offering. Is your achievement a measure of the biggest fish? Perhaps it's the attraction of fooling the hardest fish to succumb to a simple hook you've dressed with a few feathers. Maybe after all is said and done, it's just a simple act of casting a fly and taking stock as the loop forms and the fly turns over with precision, accuracy and distance. It conceivably might even be just the simplicity of watching a fly swinging or skating over that glassy, clear water that is satisfaction enough. For me, I think it's more a conclusion of all the elements that has ingrained in me a love of fly fishing for well over 40 years. In my mind, I can't deny the pleasure of taking a fish on the fly. But I do think if not for the clear running water I feel around my feet, or the sun's reflection of a gleaming blue lake, the deepness of the oceans, or the shining bright frost a cold morning, I might fish to fly a little less. Less still, if not for the hills and mountains, for the fields, forests and their hidden inhabitants. Without these, I think perhaps the instinct to pick up a rod, reel and line might not be quite so strong. The sights throughout a day's fly fishing can pass us by almost unnoticed. As our quest to cast, play and land the next fish becomes all-encompassing, as if nothing else matters. But these scenes do matter. They matter almost equal, if not greater, to the very act of the take from a fish. If only we stop and take in our exquisite surroundings, the day will be better for it. I've been lucky enough to have travelled over the years to many remarkable locations to cast a fly over some exceptional waters. I've had the privilege to engage with fantastic species along the way and I can recall vividly each trip. Not only for the dorado, the bass, the salmon, the steelhead or the sail, but equally for the rivers, the oceans and the lakes. The mountains and the forests that the flowing water meanders through are ingrained in my memory as deep as the very fish I've pursued. The deep blue oceans and their islands, reefs and flats shine as brightly in my mind as the bonefish or the GT or the queenfish. 
I'll leave it there for now. My own life's journey with the fly will be as different from any other angler's road as the day is tonight. Fishing the fly has been so ingrained in me all my life that I knew I would not be complete without it. I look forward to future adventures on my life's journey and to new experiences and spectacular settings that will continue to add to my love of casting a fly. If you enjoyed this presentation, please remember to hit like and subscribe to the channel.